top stories tonight. Nigeria's President Bola Tinubu signs new student loan bill into law. Electricity users in Nigeria enjoying 20-hour supply to pay more. Impeachment panel begins probe of a deputy governor over alleged misconduct. Speaker of South Africa's National Assembly resigns. Thank you for joining us. I'm Felicity Ezewike. We begin in West Africa, where Nigeria's president, Bola Tinubu, on Wednesday signed the student loans reenactment bill into law at the State House in Abuja. According to a tweet by the special assistant on social media to the president, Olusha Gudada, the bill signing took place at the State House in the presence of the leadership of the National Assembly, ministers, and major education stakeholders. The new legislation repeals the previous student loans, Access to Higher Education Act of 2023, and reenacts the student loans Access to Higher Education Bill from 2004. The executive bill establishes the Nigerian Education Loan Fund as a corporate body tasked with receiving, managing, and investing funds to provide loans to Nigerians pursuing higher education, vocational training, and skills acquisition. Proclaiming the student loan effectively. First of all, I must thank the members of the National Assembly for their expeditious handling of this bill, considering the children of Nigeria, that education is the tool to fight against poverty effectively. We are determined to ensure education is given the proper attention necessary for the country, including skill development programs. This is to ensure that no one, no matter how poor their background is, is excluded from quality education and opportunity to build their future. We are here because we are all educated and we are helped. In the past, you've seen a lot of our children drop out of colleges and given up the opportunity. That is no more. The standard and the control is there for you to apply, no matter who you are, as long as you are a Nigerian citizen. This is a very good day, very great, great day for the country, great day for education, great day for Nigerian students and uh, who have great need you know, for support. And we want to thank Mr. President for his compassion and his passion for the, the downtrodden, actually, who are the beneficiaries of this scheme. Now the days when students will be struggling to sponsor themselves uh, in their various educational endeavors is over, both at the tertiary and those who are seeking skills who are seeking to be skilled, to be empowered, you know, to move on you know, with their lives. So it's a very great day for the country. Uh, this is commendable. As for Nigeria students that I represent, we are happy. Uh, we'll see Mr. President's commitment to the development of education. And today, the entire education system is happy. The Nigeria students particularly are happy. Our parents are happy that, yes, in Nigeria, even the children of the poor can have access to quality education. We see Mr. President's commitment and the signing of the bill today. It shows that uh, Mr. President is a father of modern education in Nigeria. And the initiator of this bill is a hero of education. So we are happy.
Tonight's guest on the subject matter of student loans at Science Today is public affairs analyst Olusheson, I beg your pardon, Okwadi. Olusheson, thank you very much for joining us. Good evening, and my pleasure to be with you this evening to discuss this uh, topic. Let's begin with your uh, reaction. Were you elated with this signing? And how inclusive do you think this law will be? Uh, thank you very much, uh, fellow senator. Uh, I, uh, I think I will be a very, very frank, um, um, kind of uh, with mixed feelings with uh, the signing of the law today. Uh, a good one on one side, and on the other side, I have my reservation going by the way and manner some of these uh, policies of the government are being implemented. Uh, the first side of it, why I'm actually elated and uh, full of joy is to say that uh, you now have uh, inclusiveness of uh, not just people going to tertiary institution, but uh, development in the area of uh, vocational education or skill acquisition like you have it to be. You see, before now, we have actually pulled down that aspect, and it has uh, given a serious setback uh, to our development as a nation. Uh, it's not about uh, the tertiary institution. Uh, we should talk about technical schools, which uh, this particular loan scheme would definitely give uh, room for. Uh, the other side where I have my reservation is that uh, you will note definitely that uh, when you talk about policy, uh, we are not uh, having shortfall of it. The major problem we're always faced with is the implementation and to make sure that we implement it to the letter. But holistically, is a good uh, direction initiated by Mr. President, uh, at least to have the all-inclusiveness of everyone having viable education, knowing fully well that the state, uh, with the support of UBEC, should be able to provide both the primary and the secondary uh, education for all. I, I pick on your um, hesitancy about continuity. That is always a challenge in this country when it comes to implementing uh, laws. What are there uh, maybe parts of this law that affirms that this will not die with this administration, that's the longevity at the end of the day, we won't hear student loan was Tinubu's administration and not a continuum. Yeah, uh, first and foremost, signing it into law, uh, give it a boost uh, that uh, we should expect continuity for every serious administration that consider education as a bedrock to growth. Uh, but be it at its may, uh, you discover that uh, most of the time, the laws that we have once it's not in, sense, uh, in line with uh, the policy of some of the people that are coming on board, they might decide to jettison it. But part of the things we need to do is, if you are able to implement this during this first uh, uh, remaining three years of this administration, and people can see value attributable to these uh, laws, then it becomes something that everybody wants to put the government on their toes to make sure that he did, uh, he did not see, uh, we do not see the end of it. So for me, uh, it's about starting it right, getting it, getting it right, as we have actually signed this into law, to see it through. And it becomes the project of every citizen to monitor every administration. You and I know that if something is beneficiary to every citizen, we have a way of raising our voices wherever it might be, whether in the valley, anywhere to make sure that we are able to sustain it. And the government, we have no option to listen to the people because we all know we practice democracy and not uh, author, uh, authoritative style of leadership. It's democracy and it's government of the people by the people for the people. And what that implies is that you must try everything humanly possible to listen to the uh, people that you are actually governing, uh, what their reaction look like, and you must be able to see through. And I think that's practically what the president 
has done. Uh, you know, uh, during the last administration, we had a slogan of which uh, the youth were really not uh, in, in support of to say that youths are lazy. But here we are empowering the youth through education. And I also believe that if we are able to implement it properly with all the rudiments as said that we are not being biased about it, the continuity is very, very sure. Another concern quickly <laughs> is the fact that the launch was delayed several times before we had the indefinite postponement in early March. The presidency had linked uh, the delay to uh, the president's directive to expand the scheme to include loans for vocational skills. How soon do you expect that it will kick off and no more excuses? It's now a law. Yeah, now that it's uh, a law and uh, we have the inclusion of the uh, vocational uh, training as uh, 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 purported by the president. Uh, for me, plus and minus, in the next, uh, before the end of this quarter that we've actually picked, uh, give them two, three months to put their uh, house in order and make sure that the necessary uh, process. You see, the problem I am faced with is having the right process in actualizing the policy that I actually set up. And the fundamental of it that I always refer to is to have the right data. Uh, you see, we once had in this country housing for all, and we're thinking that by now it will be a, 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 an easy thing where everybody will have access to easy housing. But what are we saying? Uh, it, it, it's actually been truncated by some set of people who feel that they cannot be beneficiary of it. And that okay. is my fear with this. The area we must first concentrate on is to have the data to work on. And once we are able to build on those data, making reference to see that the right set of people that the funds are meant for are having access to it, and we can uh, 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 make use of media to propagate that the right set of people are doing it, then definitely right. we are on the right track. I'm confident of this if you are able to do it. And we must not forget, if there are people that are trying as much as possible to deviate from the focus, there must be consequences. Indeed. And that will serve as deterrent for to people others. that actually want to mess up with the policy. Well, Lucia, so thank you very much for speaking with us. And sincere apologies for earlier stuttering over your name. Sometimes the tongue just doesn't work. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Felicity, it's a uh, pardon. Uh, we are one Nigerian, and I understand the flight, uh, the plight that uh, we might have that uh, happening. One Nigerian, and together we can move on for a better and greater nation. Indeed. Thank you very much. Right. Staying with education matters, Nigeria ranks 124th out of 137 countries in terms of quality of primary education, according to the World Economic Forum. This situation, experts believe, has worsened due to the low access rate by students and parents as a result of the rising cost of education, both at primary and secondary levels. Bridging this gap is the reason quality education remains top of the list for sustainable development goals to ensure education is affordable and accessible for all, regardless of their socioeconomic background. New Central's Omolola Ololade has more in this report. Nigeria's literacy rate increased by about 7% to a total of 61%, leaving 31% of the population non-literate. 68% of the youth in Nigeria in 2020 had received secondary education, and 15% of them had completed primary education, while 17% pursued higher studies after secondary education according to Statista. Quality education, which happens to be the fourth item on the UN Sustainable Development Goal, remains a powerful tool for transforming lives of individuals and communities while contributing to the development of their society. Unfortunately, the detrimental impact of declining education standards in Nigeria, especially on the Nigerian youth, is felt in every sphere of the economy. A situation that has left many citizens to seek quality education and greener pastures abroad. 
And also, after their education, they also seek for better work opportunities, work opportunities where the educational system is well developed. The economic system is more stable, the condition is perceived to have a higher quality of education, better prospect for career advancement. Invariably, the implication of this is brain drain, a lot of skilled Nigerian workers have been exported to other countries, which is a loss to the country. While some have the opportunity to travel abroad to seek quality education, others do not even have access to basic education back home. Kuma babban abin da yake kawo yanzu a yanzu da wannan karin da muke ciki ta loci shi wa mutane kanta iyaye daukan dawaini yasu yau abin da za a ci ake kokuwa haki ne shi kansa ilimin to amma abin da za a ci shi ma kuma haki ne to idan uba bashi da nutsuwa bashi da abin da zai iya yi ya gabatar da ƴaƴan sa ya ba su abin da za su ci to wannan dole ne a samu na kasu a cikin karatun su that was the fate of 10.5 million Nigerian children of school age in 2018. That number increased to about 14 million in 2020. And in 2022, it rose to 20 million. A 2018 Universal Basic Education Commission data indicate that in northern Nigeria, Bauchi State has the most out-of-school children with 354,000 373. The statistics also show that in Southwest, Oshun State takes the lead with 165,114 out of school children, while Imo State 275,890 out of school children ranks its highest in the Southeast. And in the South South, Akwa Ibom State has the most out of school children with 581,800. Nigeria's basic educational system has been troubled for years, and the education is to believe funding plays a crucial role in reviving the sector, especially in keeping Nigerian children in school. The states should really put more money into education. Mm -hmm. But it's not just putting money into education, into the right things. So it's the efficiency and effectiveness of the funds. So it's important that we fund it appropriately. We put enough money into education to ensure that every child has a chance. However, the rising cost of tertiary education in Nigeria is becoming increasingly worrisome for Nigerian students. Although the Nigerian government believes the provision of the newly approved student loan will help make education more accessible, the student think otherwise. A loan is something you have to repay later. <laughs> so what's of people that don't have the money and I don't know the time span that I don't know it's agreed upon. I don't know. So what would what would be your fate? I wouldn't take the loan because of paying back. So I'd rather just find the money and pay my school fees by myself. Experts say the increasing cost of tertiary education is expensive, therefore higher education cannot afford to be completely free. Tertiary education in particular is extremely expensive. It's very expensive. But the thing is, Nigeria has signed on, you know, uh, we've signed all kinds of protocols and, you know, charters and whatever. I believe that we have signed on to keep our children educated up to the age of 16. I believe, which is, let's just say, roughly up to secondary school. The issue of payment for education, we've always paid in Nigeria. Oil money changed that, and we said everything was free. Now we have to go back to paying. One thing that's clear, forget how we got here. Government cannot do it again. One of the key factors for economic growth and peace is education. This is in line with the agenda of UN Sustainable Development Goal Initiative. To achieve a society where access to quality education is not only free, but affordable, 
government and all relevant stakeholders must be intentional in establishing sustainable enablers that may include public and private partnership. In Lagos, for News Central, Omolola Ololadi. Coming up, electricity users in Nigeria enjoying 20 hour supply to pay more. We'll tell you about this when we return. Stay with us. If you've just joined us, you're watching tonight. A reminder of our top stories. Nigeria's President Bola Tinubu signs new student loan bill into law. Electricity users in Nigeria enjoying 20-hour supply to pay more. Impeachment panel begins probe of Edo deputy governor over alleged misconduct. Speaker of South Africa's National Assembly resigns. Nigeria's federal government says that there will be a three-fold increase of electricity tariff from 68 naira per kilowatt hour to 225 naira, which commences April the 4th. The vice chairman of Nigeria's Electricity Regulatory Commission made this known in Abuja while briefing stakeholders of recent developments in the sector, saying that this will actually apply to Band A customers who make up less than 15% of available electricity customers in the country. Amadin Uyi reports. The speculation for increasing electricity tariff has been ongoing since December 2023. This has put many citizens on edge, as the increase in electricity tariff will have similar effect like the removal of petrol subsidy across the country, which has catalyzed an unbearable inflation. However, speaking to stakeholders in Abuja, the vice chairman of Nigeria's Electricity Regulatory Commission says that an increase is inevitable owing to the increasing cost of gas and the rising foreign exchange rates. So the April supplementary order takes effect from today. And in that order, the Commission has approved a rate review of 225 Naira per kilowatt hour for just under 15% of the customer population in Nessie. So that means that less than 15% of the customers will be affected. Many of the customers previously classified as Band A customers will not be affected. In fact, the majority of them will not be affected. The government has the ability to determine what customers pay. Because at the end of the day, our responsibility is to determine a tariff that ensures full recovery for investors. How they recover that money is actually in some extent in the hands of the government. And this is not peculiar to Nigeria. He, however, laid fears that all customers affected will witness improved service and longer hours of electricity supply, saying that the commission also intends to obtain more data from electricity distribution companies going forward. The rates that will be paid, which is 225 is uh, just above three times the existing rates. Requires that the customer truly really get the service. So I've told you that the commission is leveraging on any technology to ensure that we get access directly to the distribution system and get the data as the data is being fed from the meters, the smart meters that have been installed on the feeders, we are getting in real time or near real time. We don't give the discos the opportunity of any manipulation of data. The Electricity Regulatory Commission also revealed that it intends to close the metering gap in the country using funds of those being affected by the increase in tariff. In Abuja for New Central, I am Amadine Uyi. To discuss this, we're joined by Adetayo Adigbemle, founder, Power Up Nigeria. He joins us from Abuja. It's good to have you on the news. This is a huge leap by any measurement. 
Um, what do you think is the rationale behind it and what's your general assessment of the decision? Oh, well, um, like you already said at the beginning, uh, this is something that uh, we've always had coming. Um, a lot of factors in the production of electricity has increased in prices. Um, the tariff that, FREC, that the government is paying has also increased massively. I mean, there was a point when initially they were paying about 70, 80 billion uh, per month, but now it has gone to about 240, 260 billion per month. So, I mean, and I think this year alone, uh, uh, I mean, the estimated uh, subsidy that was supposed to pay for the um, energy sector goes into about uh, 1.6, between 1.6 and 2 trillion, depending on what the forex rate says. So yes, this has been coming all along. But then, um, it is also interesting to also say that, uh, uh, well, as against the fear that many people, you know, are entertaining, uh, I don't think we need to, to, to entertain such fears because if you look at it, um, about 50% of um, electricity consumers are directly affected by this. Uh, in fact, and a lot of other places where we thought, uh, or where a lot of people thought they were going to be affected, uh, they are not going to be affected. I've seen comments like uh, they, they agree, you know, they, they increased tariff for, for darkness. This is not true. The only band that has been affected, I mean, going by what we do, what we practice here now, we have a service reflective tariff, you know, um, which, which is determined by the hours of supplies that you, 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 you get in, in your houses or in your premises. Um, uh, is what we are using. So basically what we are saying is if you are in that bracket that enjoys the best of um, service electricity um, delivery, um, a minimum of 20 hours per, per day, um, you get to pay more. Um, okay. I mean, what we've done is to remove a lot of the um, tariff, that, um, sorry, or, or subsidy on it. So I think to, to be any less than 18% now, so you get to pay about 225. And this also cut across um, both MDs and non MDs. So, I, I mean, also, Band A, and it's confirmed that you're in that band A, you get to pay that 225. So, and if you look at it, the total population that is affected is, is barely 15%. Of, yes, of and those, those figures are, I mean, they were quite uh, clear when they spelled it out. But then again, this is Nigeria. Um, uh, there, there is concern in many quarters. I'm already seeing social media videos of people ranting about the increase. How much should we place stock on the assurance that the review will not affect other customers on other bands? Well, for now, it is clear. The tariff order, this tariff order that's released, the cost supplementary tariff order for April 2024, clearly states that the only band affected by the tariff uh, review are they those in band A's. So if you are receiving less than 20 hours per day you don't have anything to fear you don't have, i mean you're not affected it is the quality of service that you the, those in band a's are receiving that determines the cost of electricity that they pay meanwhile let me also say this the amount of work that has gone into this tariff review i i, I well I, I won't i won't a lot of people have you know questioning it but we need to first of all sit down and look at the details of the letters that we are speaking to. We don't need, I mean, a lot of people that are complaining, I'm not even getting anything after all. So why are we not allowing um, a, a near cost recovery, right? So that we can start demanding for that quality of service across board. Okay. Um, if, 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 you listen, wait, if you listen to the um, comment by the vice chairman of the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, you will notice he spoke to the use of technology in determining who and who are eligible to pay this amount at this particular point in time. Yeah, how they determine who are those that are eligible. Part of the things that the videos that you show, the claims that you show, did not state, because I was there at the event today. Part of the things that the claims did not show includes the fact that um, 
the Red Riot Act to, 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 to the discourse, and they sign an SLA that says that if there's a fault within that, that, that you know, of those bad A's that are, you know, qualified for it, um, they are within 48 hours to respond to those faults and to fix them. And that if you do not receive your 20 hours uh, minimum power supply for seven days consecutively, that feeder is automatically downgraded to band B. So that means you pay the tariff that present band Bs are paying. And don't forget that those present band Bs too, they fixed okay. those tariff, the, the, the tariff that they are paying at the moment, it was fixed in December 2022. Okay. So you can imagine, it means, what it means is that if your, 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 your service, your service level is not maintained for several consecutive days at the minimum, you, your band, your, your tariff is automatically reverted to, I think, about 48 naira thereabouts, which All is right. band B in the last uh, uh, Adetari, I'm, I'm, I'm really sorry to interject, but that's the most time we can um, take on this conversation. But you did provide some insight and I'm sure I laid some concerns. Thank you very much. Let's talk some politics now. The seven-man panel set up to investigate allegations of misconduct against Philip Schweibel, Deputy Governor of Edo State, has commenced sitting in Benin. The panel was set up by Daniel Okuboa, Chief Judge of Edo State. It is headed by S.A. Omonwa, a retired justice. The commencement of the panel sitting follows the resolution of the State House of Assembly to initiate impeachment processes against Shoibu. Shoibu has since fallen out with Governor Godswin, Godwin Obaseki, Governor of the State. At the panel's inaugural sitting on Wednesday, the House of Assembly was represented by Joe Ohiafi. Deputy Clerk, legal. Tribal was represented by Oladoyi Awoyeli, a professor and senior advocate of Nigeria. In July, Tribal approached the Federal High Court in Abuja with a suit to prevent an alleged impeachment plot against him. Rivers Governor Siminalaya Fubara has promised to surprise anybody who dares him following the political crisis rocking the state. He said he would particularly surprise those who considered his honest decision to implement the Presidential Peace Pact as a sign of weakness. Fubara, in a statement by his Chief Press Secretary, Nelson Chikudi, said he had been inundated with comments in the media about the implementation of the peace initiative, but chosen to be silent out of maturity and wisdom. He emphasized that a peace deal initiated by President Bola Tinubu and accepted by all stakeholders, including him, was a political solution to the crisis that engulfed the state on October 30, 2023. In here, in our dear state, is somebody who has respect for an elder. Mr. President invited all the parties to Abuja and came out with a resolution that we should go and implement. That resolution, I'm implementing it, is not a constitutional implementation. It's, it's, it's a political solution to a problem. And, and I'm doing it because of the respect I have for Mr. President. But let me say it, let me say it here, let me say it here. If that action that I've accepted to follow will be taken for my weakness, I will surprise them. Still ahead, Speaker of South Africa's Assembly resigns over corruption allegations. Find out more after the break. Thank you for staying with us. Let's go now to South Africa, where the Speaker of the National Assembly resigned on Wednesday, a day after a judge cleared the way for her to be arrested on charges that she took bribes when she served as Defence Minister. The resignation of the Speaker, Nosi Viwe Mapisa Mkakula, comes amid a tense, week-long standoff with law enforcement officials over a corruption case that has dealt a blow to the governing African National Congress two months before a crucial national election. On Tuesday, a judge threw out Mapisa Nkakula's court application, 
seeking to prevent her arrest. As of Wednesday afternoon, she had not turned herself into the authorities. Up next is business, and right after, we'll be having sports stories. Stay with us. Business news in association with Money Master PSB, the easy way to master your money. Welcome to business news. Nigeria has never began the new month on a bullish note, appreciating to 1,278.58 kaba against the United States dollar from 1,309.39 kaba per dollar recorded last week Thursday. This indicates an increase of 13.81 kaba at the close of trading activity. According to data from FMDQ Securities, the indicative exchange rate for the Nigerian Autonomous Foreign Exchange Market, NAFEM, closing below the 1,300 naira seen, marks the first instance since January 26 of this year. The naira depreciated to as low as 1,650 naira per dollar on March 13, 2024. Since the introduction of a slew of forex policies by the central bank, the naira has gained over 21% on the dollar since March while liquidity in the forex market has been attributed to an array of policies currently being implemented by the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN. Zambia is currently engaged in discussions to restructure $3.3 billion of commercial debt following its recent agreement with overseas holders of sovereign bonds. Secretary to the Treasury, Felix Nkulukuza, stated that negotiations have already begun with private creditors other than bondholders, and progress is being made. The country reached a deal in principle with private commercial bondholders on March 25th to rework approximately $3 billion in international bonds, bringing it closer to concluding the restructuring process. Zambia now needs to negotiate restructuring agreements with its remaining commercial creditors, including the Chinese state-owned China Development Bank, Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, the African Export-Import Bank and Western banks, such as Standard Chartered. And finally, President Imasi Nangagwa has declared Zimbabwe's drought a national disaster and appealed for over $2 billion in aid to address the hunger crisis affecting millions of people. This announcement follows similar declarations by Zambia and Malawi due to the El Nino-induced drought that has triggered a humanitarian crisis in southern Africa. According to Nangagwa, more than 2.7 million people in Zimbabwe will face food insecurity this year, with 80% of the country experiencing poor rains. The government plans to prioritize winter cropping to increase food reserves and collaborate with the private sector to import grains. The drought has also affected other countries in the region, including Botswana, Angola, Mozambique, and Madagascar. That's our offering on business news at this hour. Thank you for watching. I am Perpetua Fasami Peter. The news continues shortly. Bye for now. Business news in association with Money Master PSB. The easy way to master your money. Sports update brought to you by Corn Oil. Corn Oil, we go the extra mile. In sport, the General Secretary of the Nigerian Football Federation, Mohamed Sanusi, has implored Nigerians based in the federal capital, Abuja, and environs, and indeed from neighboring states, to troop out in large numbers to the MQ Abiola National Stadium, Abuja, on Friday to support the Super Falcons in the Women's Olympic Football Tournament African Final qualifying first leg game against South Africa. Nighttime African champions Nigeria and reigning African champions South Africa clash in a potentially explosive affair as from 5 p.m. on Friday. The return leg is due for Pretoria's High Altitude Arena, Lobsu's best feed, on Tuesday next week. Nigeria has not participated in the Women's Olympic Football Tournament since 2008 when the Falcons lost all three matches in the group phase in China. As at lunchtime on Wednesday, Captain Ajibade and 20 other players were in the Super Falcons camp. Still talking football, a new football club, Ugeli Rovers, was on Wednesday unveiled Amis, Pomp and Pagiatri in Ugeli Delta State. 
led by founder OK Umohowo, the club aims to be a beacon of community pride and talent development. With the support of dignitaries, including the OV of Ogeli Kingdom, the unveiling marked a significant milestone in local football. Sporting director Wale Adigu emphasized the club's actors rallying for grassroots backing. Grand patron Ohari C3 commended the initiative for its potential to curb youth restiveness. Partnerships with telecom and entertainment brands signal a promising journey as the club prepares for nationwide League One action starting April 2024. And now to football in Cameroon, where the Cameroon Sports Ministry has announced the appointment of Belgian Mark Brees as the new head coach of the national team replacing Rigobert Song. 61-year-old Brees brings extensive experience, having coached 15 clubs during his career in Belgium, the Netherlands, and Saudi Arabia. His most recent role was a three-year stint with Belgian club Juven. Joining Brees as his assistant will be former Cameroonian international striker Francois Omam Biyik, who scored 26 goals for the Indomitable Lions between 1985 and 1998. Brees inherits a squad that ex exited the recent African Cup of Nations at the round of 16 stage, losing to Nigeria. However, Cameroon currently tops Group D in the African qualifiers for the 2026 World Cup with a win over Mauritius and an away draw against Libya. And to wrap up sports updates, we'll go straight to the world of uh, tennis, where new rules designed to attract more interest in doubles tournaments for fans, players, and organizers will be trailed starting at this month's Madrid Masters, the ATP announced on Wednesday. Doubles events have become a financial headache for organizers because they no longer feature the best singles players, prompting the ATP to try and convince them to return. As a result, the doubles draw in Madrid, which runs from 24th April to 5th May, will include up to 60 slots reserved for teams entering via the singles ranking. The doubles tournament will also be condensed into five days during the second week as spectators will be free to move around the court. The players will be subjected to new rules as well to reduce the length of matches. Interesting times ahead in the world of tennis. And that wraps it up on Sports Update and Favor Itwa Entertainment is up next. Sports Update, brought to you by Corn Oil. Corn Oil, we go the extra mile. Entertainment News, in association with Glow Unlimited. Iblis, the rapper and actor known as Tobey Chuku, has Iblis, the rapper and actor known as Tobey Chuku, age of four, recently disclosed in an interview that his hiatus from music was driven by a desire for diversification and prioritizing fatherhood. With the unexpected arrival of his two children, he felt compelled to take a step back from music and immerse himself in family life. Alongside embracing fatherhood, he delved into various creative ventures such as acting in movies and documentaries, seeking to express himself artistically beyond the realm of music. Now, his decision to explore these avenues was further motivated by a desire to produce more content and contribute to different artistic spaces. And now, a Manhattan criminal court judge has rejected Jonathan Major's bid to overturn his conviction in a domestic violence case involving his former girlfriend, Grace Jabari. Majors, who is 34 years old, faces sentencing on Monday after a jury found him guilty of misdemeanor, third degree assault, and second degree harassment. Stemming from a place, stemming from a stemming from a text from March 23, 2023, in New York City, Jabari accused Majors of twisting her arm during a dispute over a text message. Majors, known for his roles in Marvel production, including Loki faces up to a year jail term. He denied the allegations and he is considering counterclaims against Jabari, who has sued him for defamation and physical injuries. Marvel has also dropped majors from further projects following the verdict. And that's all we can take on entertainment tonight. Next is trending after this short break.
Entertainment News in association with Glow Unlimited. Moving away from entertainment news, Nathaniel Bassi is trending on social media. The renowned gospel artist Nathaniel Bassi has taken legal action against four individuals for alleged criminal defamation and cyber stalking. Nathaniel Bassi lodged a petition with the Inspector General of Police, Kayode Egbetukun, on April 1, 2024, with the support of his legal team. The petition follows recent accusations circulating on social media claiming that Nathaniel Bassi is the father of another gospel artist's child. The lawyer, represents, the lawyer representing Bassi emphasized the urgency for police intervention. There's also a trending video of the lawyers emphasizing the depth of the situation. Let us take a look at that video now. The petition is against one Mr. Okon, Okoronko Ejike, Mr. Kingsley Ibe, and two others. Let's also educate our people. Um, you cannot catch cruise with someone's hard and reputation. In fact, the law does not understand what is a cruise in the sense that you are criminally defaming someone and you cannot hide behind a camera to say what you were doing was a cruise. Because if it was a cruise, you would have clearly made it you know, a cruise. But in this instance, they were very categorical in their statements. Some of one of them even posted a picture of our client, Nathan Ebassi, and said, This is the let us now take some reactions to this story on X. Wumi is saying, people think they can stay behind keypads, write and post anything. When we say social media needs to be reg regulated in Nigeria, some of you are here busy writing trash. They really need to start teaching people lessons. Nice World Minister Nathaniel Bassi. And then we have another one from Waju say, nice move. This will serve as a lesson to others. They can't just come online and talk anyhow. Freedom of speech is, is, freedom of speech is guaranteed, but freedom after speech is not guaranteed. Then we have another one from T. Dozier saying, smart move. I hope they do well to follow up the case. These keypad warriors ought to know where they draw the line. We've heard of uh, the case with Choma, Okoli, and Erisko, and Very Dark Man, and also Fisayo. The growing, of, the, the growing incident of cyberbullying and also cyber harassment continu continues to emphasize the urgent need for robust measures to address online abuse and protect individuals from its harmful effects. That's all we can take tonight on What's Trending. You can join the, the conversation and share your thoughts across our social media platforms at New Central TV. I am Jadel Simon. And that's all tonight. But before we go, let's take another look at some of the major stories. Nigeria's president, Bola Tinubu, signs new student loan bill into law. Electricity users in Nigeria enjoying 20-hour supply to pay more. Impeachment panel begins probe of a door deputy governor over alleged misconduct. Speaker of South Africa's National Assembly resigns. Would like to hear from you. Please send your eyewitness report to the number on the screen. You can follow us on social media to do that at New Central TV. You can watch live on DSTV channel 422, Star Times channel 274, Apple TV, and on YouTube. Many thanks for watching. Good